The French Rosette Blanket makes a charming addition to your crochet repertoire. With just three colors and three core motifs, you can create any size blanket because the motifs fit together like a mosaic. The companion pattern includes instructions for each of the pieces along with a sample graph so you can create your own unique rose garden. Since the rosette is the key to the design, in this video you will learn to crochet the flower motif. If you look closely, it is actually made up of four tiny motifs. For the sample baby blanket, three of them are rosettes and the fourth is simply all white. However, you could have anywhere from one to four rosettes in each flower motif. Then, a narrow band of blue creates the second design feature on the border. While capturing the essence of the French provincial era, this pinstripe also accentuates and defines the shape of the motif. We are going to form a slip knot and chain four. Now I'm going to use the double strand and slip stitch in the very first chain to join the round. Now I'm going to just fold that over because I'm just going to work around and into that ring. So now I'm going to chain one, insert my hook into the ring, and work a single crochet. Chain three, insert into the ring and work another single crochet. Chain three, do that twice more. One, two, three, and here's the last single crochet. And one, two, three. Now, in the top of the first single crochet, under both loops, we're going to work a slip stitch to join the round. And what we just did was form four chain three loops, plus we wove in the end we're about ready to do round two. Now we do not turn, okay? So we're gonna chain one, then we're gonna yarn over our hook, insert it into the next space, pull up a loop, three loops on hook, yarn over and pull through all three to form a half double crochet. Now we're gonna work two double crochets. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, three loops on hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do another double crochet. Yarn over the hook, insert the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're going back to a half double crochet, which is yarn over the hook, insert, pull up a loop, three loops on hook, yarn over and pull through all three. That's a half double crochet. That concludes the petal, but we have to tie it down. So, in the top of the single crochet of the round below, we're going to slip stitch. So now we've just formed the first petal. Now you go to the next space that we formed on the first row, and we're going to chain one. Yarn over, work a half double crochet, two double crochets, a half double crochet, and a slip stitch into the top of the next single crochet to tie it down. That's our second petal. Now we're going into the next space. So now we have our fourth petal. Now this is where it gets interesting because on round three we begin by chaining two. One, two. Now notice we haven't turned yet. We're going to fold this petal over and we are going to find in row one, in that original ring, we're going to find the ring between the two single crochets of the prior row. And we're going to pull up a loop and work a single crochet. And chain four. One, two, three, four. Fold the next petal over 
and right under the center of it, you'll see the single crochet on this side, the single crochet on that side, and we're going right into that ring of the first round and work another single crochet. Chain four, one, two, three, four. Now, that brings us right back to the beginning of the round and you want to slip stitch into the top of that single crochet. So what you have on the back are four more loops. Now what we want to do is we want to chain one, work a half double crochet into that space that we just formed, and then five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. So we did one half double crochet and five double crochets. Now you're going to have to scoot these over so we have a little more space. We're going to work another half double crochet and then a slip stitch into the top of that single crochet. So we've made a big petal that falls right between these two petals. Now, chain one to begin the next petal. And we're going to repeat this all the way around. Instead of slip stitching into the top of that, what we want to do is flip this over and find that single crochet and the last slip stitch is placed around that single crochet. So now that we have that folded forward, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. Then we're going to slip stitch around the next single crochet, which is right here of the row below, but we're doing it from the back. One thing that's important is to insert the hook in and around that single crochet with the yarn toward the back, like so, and that's a slip stitch and pull it up tightly and chain four more. And then you want to slip stitch into the very first stitch or chain of the round or the slip stitch of the round and end off. It's best to weave the end in along the loops. The next round on this is all white. So I always work with the front side of the rows facing me. And you're going to slip stitch into any space along the back. So I'm just going to pull up my feeder yarn like so. But I'm going to hold it with these folded down because I want the front of this row to face me. Now we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. This is where I usually pull that end through. That helps weave it in, but I'll weave that in later. Okay, this chain three will count as the first double crochet. Now we're going to work two more double crochets into that same space. Now I'm going to slide it over so it's so that this will be at the corner. Okay. Now I'm going to chain one and go to the next space and I'm going to work three double crochets chain two to form the corner and three more double crochets into this very same space. Okay, now I have three, chain two, and three double crochets. Now I'm going to chain one more before I jump into the next space and repeat the last sequence. Now we're coming to the last loop. Well, we've already done the first three double crochets there so that this end is right at the point of the corner. So all we have to do is finish this corner with three double crochets. One, two, three, 
two chains to form the corner space and then slip stitch right into the top of that first double crochet. That has formed a little square with four corners and both pieces of yarn are coming out very close to the corner. Cut the yarn leaving about 24 inches on two of the mini motifs. Weave in all other ends. So now we're going to do this plain little square. Form a slip knot and chain four using a double strand of yarn. Slip stitch into the first chain to form a ring. Wrap the yarn tail around, if there is any, just wrap the yarn tail around and chain two more. That chain two represents the first half double crochet. Now work two more half double crochets into the ring. Chain two to form the corner space and then work three more half double crochets into the ring. One, two, three, chain two to form the corner and slip stitch into the top of that first chain to join the round. Chain four. The first three chains represent one double crochet and the last chain creates a chain one space. Notice how the chain four comes right out of the top of the first half double crochet. We're going to skip the second half double crochet and go right into the third half double crochet and work a double crochet. That creates a space or an eyelet on the side. Then we're going to work two more double crochets into the corner, chain two, two double crochets into the corner. So you did, so what we did is we're going to work two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets into the corner space. Now, this sometimes happens is that the first stitch of the next side gets buried under that last stitch of the corner. So what we're going to do is pull it back, reveal it, and work a double crochet right into that first stitch. Chain one to form an eyelet on this side, skip the next stitch, and then work the next double crochet in that third stitch on this side. Repeat the corners and the sides all the way around because this double crochet at the beginning of the round, the chain up double crochet, belongs to this first stitch. So we're done. All we have to do is slip stitch into the third chain at the beginning to join the round. I'm gonna use this end to crochet this seam going this way, and I'm gonna use this end to crochet this seam going that way. Before you begin seaming, Make sure the remaining yarn tails are secure. I'm starting in the corner. You want to identify your two chains at the corner. Now remember, this is the right side, so this is the right sides together. I'm going to insert my hook through the second chain on the corner, which is right here. These are the two inside loops that are meeting in the middle. I'm just going to pick up that and slip stitch. Then I'm going to go into the next stitch to the next stitch on this side and I'm going to slip stitch. This is the easiest way to seam these little pieces together without a lot of extra finishing. You could have crocheted them together, you could sew them together. It doesn't really matter because what you want to do is have a tight fitting seam. So when I get to about the halfway point I want to make sure the two eyelets are kind of lined up, and they are. Flip it back, continue on. So all I'm going to do is fold that one over, fold this one over, making sure my end is aligned properly. These two are the seams that I want to join. So I'm going to go to the second chain, the one closest to that side, 
insert my hook there, then go over to this one, find the second chain closest to the side that I'm going into, which is right there. Pick up the yarn tail that I'm continuing on with and slip stitch. But now we're going to return to this edge and do the same thing going across here. Insert my hook into the corner and pull up a loop. With a double strand of yarn, chain three. That will count as the first double crochet, but I am going to pull that end through and weave that end in later. Now I'm going to work another double crochet, chain two, and two double crochets into the same space. One and two. Now I'm going to pull this back to reveal that first stitch and I'm going to work a double crochet in each of the next three stitches, which is that little group. That brings us to the space. So I'm going to chain one and work a double crochet, skip that, skip that stitch and work a double crochet in each of the next three double crochets. Now that brings us to the, the corners of the mini motifs. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the first corner that I reach, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. I'm going to reserve that loop and not finish the double crochet, but I am going to yarn over again and go into the next corner of the mini motif. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through the remaining three loops on the hook. Then I'm going to work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. And that brings us to the side space, that chain one space. So I'm chaining one, and then I'm skipping that space, that chain, and going into the very next double crochet and working a double crochet in each of the next three. When I reach the corner space, I start my repeat, just like I did on this one. And I'm going to repeat this all the way to the end, which brings us right up to the corner, which is already completed when we began. So all we have to do is slip stitch into the top of the chain up, and we have just done the first row of the border on the flower motif. We have two more rows of border to go, but these rows are identical to the border on the big square and the rectangle. So I will cover these in the next video. I'll see you then. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please take a moment to subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications of upcoming videos and events. Happy crocheting!